Hey everyone, Ray Sawville, raysawville.com. In today's video, we are going to be taking an in-depth look at Google Keyword Planner and all the different features you can use to jumpstart your business. Now, what this tool allows you to do at a very high level is to do some pretty awesome keyword research with very little experience. So I'm gonna take you through from step one all the way to the end on everything you need to know about Google Keyword Planner. So let me know if you have any questions and let's get to it. Now, in order to access Google Keyword Planner, you need to have a Google Ads account. So if you already have a Google Ads account, skip ahead a few seconds, I'll have a link down below where you can skip ahead. But if you do not have an account, the first thing you need to do is go to ads.google.com. It'll take you to this screen and click on Start Now. Now, what'll happen once you get to this account, you can see I have a bunch of accounts in process already here. So your screen will look something like this. And then what you can do down at the bottom to kind of hide this down here, it says switch to expert mode. Make sure you click that. After that is done, you can click create an account without a campaign, and then you can submit. So now you can begin to explore your account and you'll have access to the Google Ads campaign interface. And I'll have a video down the line on exactly how to create a campaign and all that sort of jazz, but the main reason we're here is for Google Keyword Planner. The first way you're gonna to want to get to Google Keyword Planner is go to Tools and Settings, this little wrench icon, and go to Keyword Planner. Now, if you haven't used Keyword Planner over the past year or so, you're gonna notice it looks a little bit different. It might, it might even be two years, but they've added some pretty cool updates that I'm pretty happy with, and there's a bunch of different ways to access new keywords and new ideas. So you're going to see here on your screen that you're going to have a discover new keyword section and get search volume and forecasts. This volume and forecast option is more if you've built a keyword list through an external tool like SEMrush or, or something along those lines and you can pop all those keywords in there. And Google will tell you, here's the historic data that we're getting over the past year for this list of keywords. Really great tool, but we're not gonna use it for this video. Where we're going to go to is to discover new keywords. And if you click on this option, you're greeted with two things. You can enter in products or services into this bar here, or you can start with your website. Now, if your website is indexed properly, it has a site map and you know, everything is buttoned up from a technical SEO perspective, you're gonna have a good time here, but if you do not have that type of luxury, you're going to have to start here by searching for different keyword ideas. And this is normally where I go as a best practice anyways. So what I was kind of messing around with earlier was I was looking for like different baseball gloves or baseball mitts. So I'm gonna show you what happens if I just type in baseball gloves here. So if you type that in and type in get results, Google is going to spit out all of this information your way and it's going to let you know how many average monthly searches each one of those terms receive how competitive the term is from a paid perspective so on the ad spot one two three um, and it's also going to show you roughly how much you'll have to pay for that bid if you are planning on bidding out a, building out an ad campaign however the, the majority of you are going to, going to want to see the amount of average monthly searches those keywords are getting now, the really powerful part here, guys, is what they've started to add here recently is this refined keywords column. It is money. It is so good. What you can begin to do is you can go back to your search and you can get rid of brand or non-brand terms. So look at all these brands that are popping up here, right? You can find all the different brands of baseball mitts or if you're doing, if you're in a uh, heating and HVAC company, it'll give you all the different brands of your air conditioners, all that kind of stuff. So there's a really cool way where you can just get rid of all these different brands. You can make sure you're focusing on very specific keywords. I just wanna look at non-brand keywords here. So what you can do is get rid of all of these brands and you're going to see a majority of these keywords are just those high volume keywords that are gonna be perfect for writing content on my site. If I'm looking for really top of funnel keywords that I wanna target with an ad campaign, here they are. So this is one really great function that I don't think a lot of people are aware of. It's relatively new and you can refine those keywords, get rid of a bunch of brand campaign stuff and get right to those core terms, which is just amazing for a ton of different purposes. The other really cool and powerful thing that I don't see a lot of people take advantage of 
Obviously, baseball gloves could be called a baseball mitt as well. Um, there, there's a bunch of different nuances when it comes down to you know semantics, obviously. So you can go to broaden your search and you can add in different terms here. So if I wanna do baseball protective gear, I can type in baseball mitt. And then if you add, press enter, um, that will show up there. But then you can continue to get search results and kind of continue to funnel down and it'll give you a ton of different ideas. So what this is showing you right here is at the keyword level, all of the different keywords you're going to be ranking for. Now think how powerful this is, guys. If, if you've used this tool before, it's pretty, pretty obvious, but if you've never used this tool before, these are your money terms that you're going to wanna focus on. For the most part, if you're writing content, if you're targeting paid campaigns, longer tailed, the better. It's typically gonna be less competitive and you can kind of carve out your niche a little bit more. But this tool right here is just extremely beneficial for marketers, um, even if you don't run paid campaigns. So while this tool is primarily used for PPCers, everyone should be using it if you're a marketer. So we're on that, we're on that keyword ideas tab up here, right everybody? If you go to grouped ideas, this is another really, really powerful tool because if you click on this option, it's going to show you all of the different groups and what you might notice here is this could be different subcategories on uh, you know category level pages. So here's Rawlings custom. Here's all my Rawlings customs terms. Here's all of my batting terms. It just really breaks it down into topics as best as it can, right? There's definitely gonna be some nuances in here and it's going to not always be 100% accurate, but there's just a ton of leeway here and just a really great way to carve out your keyword space. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned yet is keyword volume. You may have a product or service that only targets part of the country, part of the world, one state, one city, what have you. If you go to locations on the top of your screen up here, click on locations, you can enter in the target location that you wanna hit. So I'm in the wonderful state of Wisconsin. If I wanna see what Wisconsin targets here, so you can see I'm selecting Wisconsin, I can then get rid of the rest of the United States and it'll show me just keyword volume for that term in the state of Wisconsin. So obviously if I have some um, Milwaukee Brewer uh, baseball gear, I can write really targeted ads or content around that and get an idea of what those core terms are. And for the most part, it's going to be relevant to the United States, but you never know. And then obviously you can change your, your languages as well. You can look at the past 12 months and all the way up to everything that's available. The furthest I've seen this go back has been to like 2014 or 2015 or so, but for the most part, you're gonna wanna get an idea of you know the past 12 months of, of search volume. Now, going back to keyword ideas here, you're going to notice that there's this filter here. Anytime you're on a Google platform, if you think about Google Sheets, for example, this little filter here, funnel, is, is a way to filter out different content. So what you can do is click on this here, and you can just throw out a bunch of negative keywords along with even bids if you wanted, but for the most part, I like to look at um, negative keywords. And what I mean here, is if you click on this filter by keyword, you can say contains um, A2000 here. So I'm, I'm looking at this A2000 here. If I wanna see all of the A2000 keywords because I make a ton of revenue on this one product, here's every single keyword for the A2000. How awesome is that? Think about your niche. Think about how much you can do just with that alone. Ton of, ton of uh, value there. On the flip side, you can exclude keywords that are in your current plan or within your current account. So if you are doing a paid account, you can get rid of keywords that are in your account right now, which is very powerful. Um, and there's a ton of other things you can do here as well. So um, you can also do does not contain A2000. So if you do the flip side of that, it's gonna get rid of all the A2000s in your plan because you might be like, yo, Google, I don't sell the A2000. Get rid of that, I don't, I don't care. So it'll kind of help you tune down on stuff and just refine your plan over time. Um, but really recommend guys, this refine keywords tab is so powerful looking at brand. It found all the different positions. So if, I, if I'm looking for catcher's gear, 
because obviously catchers have so much more gear that they wear compared to the rest of the players on the um, team. There's so many more <laughs> keywords apparently, which is interesting. Um, there's just a way to refine all of these keywords based on what Google is, is finding. So highly recommend you check out that side of the tool over there. The last thing I'm going to want to mention is on this grouped ideas tab. Let's say just, you know, for the sake of argument, I really like all of um, kids baseball clothing. That, that's, my, that's my business. I sell kids um, baseball um, gear. So if I type in kid here, I'm sorry, I need to go back to the keyword idea. So if I go to keyword kid, and of course it's not showing anything for kid here. Kids maybe? Aha. So here's all of the kids terms. So what I can do is I can select all of those. I can add the keywords. It then adds the keyword to my plan. And then what Google does here from the plan perspective is it'll forecast out where things, all the clicks will come from in the state of Wisconsin based on my plan settings. It'll let them know what my potential budget is, all that sort of jazz. I'm gonna have a follow-up video down the line if you're running pay-per-click ads. If this is something you would like to see, let me know below in the comments and I can kind of expand out on this tab alone. But the biggest thing that a lot of businesses are not capturing, especially if you're writing a ton of content, is using this keyword planner to find high value keywords to target across your business. And that's Google Keyword Planner. So let me know what you guys' thoughts are. If there's any high level things I missed or questions that you may have, I, I did go over a lot there, but this tool is just crucial if you're running any type of campaigns, if you're writing content, obviously. So let me know what your thoughts are. And there's hundreds and hundreds of tools out there. I just prefer Google Keyword Planner because I'm a PPCer and it's one of the tools I've been using for the past eight or nine years or so and Google just continues to add a ton to it. So that's all I've got for today's videos. Thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. Thanks.